Inspector Lestrade, at once. Your name, sir? Dr. John Watson. Is he expecting you, sir? In a way, I believe he is. Well, I'll tell him you're here, sir. You can go in, sir. Ah, Dr. Watson, I didn't expect to have the pleasure of seeing you again so soon. Will you kindly read that? Uh, what is it? Read it. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. I think it's disgraceful, sir. Absolutely disgraceful. What? Yes, and I'm glad you are here so that I can tell it to you personally. Why, you and I both know that it was Sherlock Holmes who solved the Cunningham case. If it wasn't for his brilliance and his persistency, the facts would never have been brought to light. And I think it's scandalous, sir, that the newspapers should have given me all the credit and said so very little about his magnificent achievement. What do you think, Doctor? Hmm? I, I, well, I absolutely agree with you. Eh? I'm glad you're on my side, Doctor. Why, of course, I'm so glad you take it that way. Well, what does Holmes think? Oh, he doesn't mind, you know, he doesn't care who gets the credit. <laughs> no, dear old Holmes, such a modest fellow. Yes, well, I'll... look, you must give him my kind regards. Yes. And tell him that, although I know he doesn't think anything about it, I intend to get the newspapers to get the facts straight. Well, that's very good of you, Inspector. Well, what's Holmes doing these days? Well, the last time I saw him, he was playing about with a lot of ink smudges and talking about, um, the prints that fingers make. No. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Holmes. Always experimenting. Inspector <laughs> Lestrade, sir. Yes, what is it? There's been a murder reported at the home of Lord Beryl. What? Lord Beryl of the Foreign Office? That's him, sir. Oh, I'll be right with you. Excuse me, Doctor. Yes, of course. Lord Beryl. This is going to be a tricky situation to handle. What with the Foreign Office and who knows what else. Yes, indeed. Can I be of any assistance? No, I don't think so, Doctor. Oh, well, perhaps as a medical man, mind you, I don't know what to expect, but I think you would be of invaluable assistance. Say no more. Here's the address, sir. Your carriage is waiting outside. Oh, thank you very much. Perhaps you'd care to acquaint Sherlock Holmes and what has happened. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know myself what's happened. As you said, the people involved make this case rather delicate. Perhaps a little suggestion now and then might help facilitate matters. One never knows. Yes, you're so right. Take a message to Mr. Sherlock Holmes of 221 Baker Street. 221B. Yes, of course, 221B Baker Street. Tell him what has happened and drive him to Lord Burr's residence. Yes, sir. And tell him Dr. John Watson is already there. The flat's the first floor up. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. murder committed at the home of Lord Beryl. Inspector Lestrade and Dr. Watson have already gone there. Thank you. Would you uh, care to have some tea? Some tea, sir? Yes. Is that what you're making? Oh, come along. Come and have a look at this. I'm working on an extract from a special series of, of pygmy poisons. Oh, very interesting, sir. Uh, tea? Well, yes, I don't mind if I do. You take milk? Yes, sir, please, sir, if I may. Splendid. Sugar? Thank you, sir. Now, where did I put that sugar? Ah, ah, that's it. It's very fiery. Help yourself. Thank you, sir. That's oh, all. What's this you're doing here, sir? Well, I believe that certain poisons, if taken in the correct doses, can actually have beneficial rather than fatal effects. Now, that's very interesting, sir. Yes, it is, isn't it? Well, what's all this over here, sir? Oh, that? Oh, those are some tropical leaves. Uh, they were sent to me by a friend of mine who hunts in that part of the country. The essence, you see, passes through this tube, down here and across the table, and is condensed in that retort there. 
And what's that stuff in the bottom there? That's lime. That acts as a catalytic agent to, to combine the essence of the leaves with a dark, tar-like substance, which you can see at the bottom. Inspector Lestrade, I demand to see my wife. You've kept me waiting half an hour, and now I should like an explanation. Of course, you're entitled to one, sir. You know that Karl Oberstein was murdered in your study. I was informed of that, and it is a tragedy, of course. But I still don't see that that is... Lord Bell, your wife has confessed to shooting him. What? That's why I couldn't allow you to see her. We were taking her statement. What does she say? Apart from the actual confession of murder, she refuses to say anything. You may go in now if you wish, Lord Bell. What's that you're putting in now, sir? Well, it's a form of acid dye. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, where have you two been all the afternoon? Didn't the sergeant tell you? Oh, yes, I remember. There was a murder somewhere. Was it interesting? No, Mr. Dewey. Uh-huh. Well, the strange coming over whiskey and soda. Whiskey and soda, the strange. No, I'll, I'll be off duty in, um, five minutes. Yes, I think that'd be all right. Mm -hmm. Don't... Yeah. <laughs> Neat for me. Well, um, sit down if you can find yourself a place. There you go. Yes, well, I think we can leave that to boil for a little while now. Now, gentlemen, what's the problem? Hmm? Who was murdered? A man named Karl Oberstein. Oberstein? Oberstein. Oh, yes, I remember. An Austrian chap. Mm, he was originally, but of course, for a number of years, he's been a freelance agent. Mm -hmm. Buying and selling anything he can get his hands on, eh? But his hands in a bit too much this time. Lady Burl shot him. Holt Smith, 38. Oh, really? It was a nasty bit then. I examined the body before it was removed. Entire back of the head gone. Instantaneous death, of course. Did you find the bullet? No, the police sergeant will do that. It hadn't come out. Yes, and that shot in the back of the head removes any possible chance Lady Beryl may have had of claiming self-defense. You're off duty now, aren't you, Wilkins? Yes, sir. You may go home. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure working for you this afternoon, Mr. Holmes. I'd like to know how it all turns out. I'll let you know. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I feel sorry for Lord Beryl. There'll be quite a scandal when this appears in the papers. Yes, there certainly will be. I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. What nationality was Lady Beryl originally? Well, um, she was born in Austria, although she was brought up in America. She's been here in England for the past five years since her marriage, you know. It's a shame a woman like her has to remain in prison. Still, she might decide to tell you... What did you say? I beg your pardon. What did you say just now? I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you did. You said, I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. <laughs> oh, that. Yes, what did you mean? Nothing, except, of course, that Lady Beryl didn't shoot this chap Oberstein at all. But, but, but she confessed to it. Nonsense. She didn't shoot Oberstein because Oberstein wasn't shot. His head was bashed in with a blunt instrument. The revolver you claim was the murder weapon actually belonged to Oberstein. She found it lying by his side and pretended she'd done it in order to shield her husband. She's no more guilty than you two are. And would you hold that like a good fellow, please? Mm. Would you please repeat that? Of course, it's as plain as a... Here, would you mind holding that? Oh, well, it's not plain to me. Well, you told me that Lady Beryl confessed to shooting Oberstein. But Oberstein wasn't shot. Just because you find a man with the back of his head shattered and a gun lying by his side is no reason to assume he's been shot. 
Thank you. You also assumed that the bullet had lodged in Oberstein's cranium because it hadn't emerged through the front. Now, any student of elementary ballistics knows that the greatest damage to the skull is on the opposite side to which the bullet entered. The point of entry is always clean. But the gun we found was an Austrian gun, and, and Lady Bell is an Austrian. Now, there's a logical bit of reasoning for you. Would you mind holding that, please? Lady Beryl saw Oberstein lying there and jumped to the same conclusion we did. Well, Lady Beryl's innocent. Then somebody else is guilty. Brilliant. We've got to get back to the premises and re-examine them for clues. You come with us, Holmes. This nonsense can wait. Nonsense? Nonsense. Nonsense? Did you say nonsense? I'll have you know, Inspector Lestrade, that if the law enforcement agencies of this country were a little, uh, an infinitesimal amount more advanced than ancient Neolithic man, I would not have to be doing the basic research work that will in time benefit police bureaus throughout the earth. You may have a point, Mr. Holmes. A uh, point? The only point is, the only point is human, of which there is a paucity in the halls of our defense of the public. Oh, do you really think so? I certainly do think so. And I'll tell you a few other things, Inspector. 